No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life, you can take the lid off of your job. And, and if, if, if you're wondering if you still have the lid on in your life, here are some clues that's going to let you know that the lid is still on. If you're not excited about waking up in the morning, if you're sitting around bored out of your mind, if you got time to do everything anybody asks you to do, you probably got the lid on. <laughs> If when you tell your dreams to all your friends, it makes sense to them. You got your lid on, man. Your dreams should be, should not make sense to everybody. You got to say something that make people go, how are you going to do that? That's when you got the lid off. And if I were you, I'd do that. I'd take the lid off. Makes sense to me, don't it? I mean, look, in show business, that's all the time. You could come to work one day and they just say the show is canceled. What can you do? So what I've done is... I've produced so much content. I got radio, I write books, I write movies, I do TV shows, I host TV shows. I got a game show, I do a Facebook watch show. I do so many. So when they come and they cancel something, I don't really give a damn. Cause I got eight more jobs. You know what I mean? I've just managed to stack. And then I'm always prepared. I prepare for what's coming. Here's the deal. Change is inevitable. So here's what's going to happen. No matter what's going on in your life, it's not permanent. Everything is going to change. So there's two things you can do with change. You can react to it or you can participate in it. It's going to change anyway. So if you keep waiting around, you're going to have to react to the change. And now you, you're behind. But if you participate in the change, if you know the job you have is not going to last forever. I'm just telling you. COVID proved that already. Where you go to work at every day, that's going to change. COVID proved that already. Your best laid plans has changed. So what you got to start doing is you got to start anticipating that it's going to change and just start living your life with the preparation for change. No matter what you're doing, you could be doing more. Remember that. It's 24 hours in a day. You got to use as many of those hours to prepare stability for yourself as you can. I said it online, I got in a lot of trouble. If you sleep eight hours, you're not ever going to be rich. If you have any dreams of being rich, you cannot sleep eight hours a day. It's only 24 hours in a day. If you sleep eight hours, that's a third of your life. How can you, you cannot be asleep a third of your life and become successful. You can't. People got mad at me. They're talking about Steve Harvey prefers wealth over health. No, I'm just telling you. If your ass wants to hit it and be rich, you got to quit bullshit. You got to get your hustle and grind on. You can't sleep at well, how much you sleep. I sleep between four and five hours. If I get six hours, woof, I'm tired. Plus I'm old. I got to get up. I want to see what today is. I can't miss nothing. Now, I'm old, man. I'm 64 years old, so I can't be laying in the bed waiting. I got to get up early. I'm up for the sun come up every day because I just want to see what else God got for me. He done gave me a lot. Might as well go see the rest of it, right? You can't see your sleep. So I've always prepared myself for what this business is. And for the first time, I've actually thought about retiring. This is the first time I've ever thought about retiring. So now... I want to come home. I'm coming to Africa. The one thing that I have learned to relate to all of my children is to dream. There is nothing bigger than your dream. Nothing is greater than your dream. Now, as we sit in this great educational institution, I am not saying that your education is not important because it's tied to a lot of your dreams. But let me tell you something. There ain't nothing nothing bigger than your dream because your dream will propel you to get the education don't you ever stop dreaming don't you ever stop imagining and we're going to talk about them two things a lot but don't you ever stop dreaming your bible says a man without a dream or a vision shall perish that's in your bible it ain't just in the one i read no way in there does it say without education you perish but it says without a dream or vision you perish 
So if what you are dreaming about requires an education, it is then your dream that propels you to get the education. But the dream is bigger than anything, man. See, if it was an education that caused you to be great or successful, I ain't here today because I don't have one of them. But nobody could outdream me. Your dream is everything, man. It's the biggest part of your life. <laughs> Look, man, it is that thing that God puts in you that don't let you sleep sometimes. It's your dream. It's that thing, that part of you, man, that wakes you up and stirs the very pit of your soul. I've always taught my children to dream. The secret, though, the secret to real success is if you tie your gift to the dream. Whatever position you find yourself in today, we put ourselves there by a series of thoughts and actions. Thoughts turn into things. That's very important to know. So let's look at both sides of it. For people who think negative thoughts, it turns into negative things. And the direct opposite is true for those who think positive thoughts. It turns into positive things. That's the deal. It's, it's as simple as that, folks. Thoughts become things. So the one glaring question for all of us always is on a daily basis, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Because this is a fact of life. This is biblical. This is spiritual. This is written. This is philosophical. This is the law of the universe. This is just the way it is now. And here the cold part, folks. It don't matter if you believe me or not. It does not matter if you have never been explained this or not. And it does not matter if you think it works in your life or not. It don't matter. Listen to me. It is the way it is. It is, it's just whatever it's the law of the universe you call whatever you want. However, you got to dress this thing up because this all it is. So when I say that you are where we are today because we thought ourselves here, oh, you best to believe that's true. You thought yourself here. No one else. See, let me explain something. I got people around me who so badly want to take credit for it. Every man in this room, you met, you blew your 20s. You spend all your 30s trying to make, make up, up for, your for your 20s. Yeah, that's, a, that's the truth. Dog, Ugh. every dude in this room blew their 20s mm -hmm. and at 30 trying to fix what they should have did in their 20s. Yeah. And so, so forth and so on. You turn 40, you're trying to recover from the mistakes you made when you're 30. Mm -hmm. Now at 40, man, it's time you start. Mm -hmm. Really, at 30, you need to start buckling it on down. Mm -hmm. And just realize, man, everybody make mistakes. And if the mistakes you're going through are going to help you become the person you need to be later on. Steve Harvey. All them mistakes, dog, yeah. they cool to make. Yeah. You, I needed to mess up every marriage. <laughs> I needed to get arrested like I did. Yeah. I needed to get shot. Mm -hmm. I needed all this, dog. You got, you I, I needed shot? to be homeless. Yeah. I needed all them things to happen to turn me into who I am today. So when you're young and you make mistakes, don't let them eat you up. Because mm. everybody that done made it, done made them. Yeah. You got to fail in order to win. Hey, look, man, to understand how to hit the game when it's shot, you got to miss the game when it's shot. First of all, you're talking about stuff that I can relate to like so many others can relate to. I mean, you know, everybody got the same story. We just got different details. But like I always say, life is 10% what happens to you. is 90% what you do about it. See, we're going to dive into a chapter from my new book. And it's chapter one, section one. This is very clear for people. So the first step is getting completely and brutally honest enough to say, I am tired of myself. When you say I'm sick and tired or being sick and tired, that's the facilitator of change. That's when you're ready to say these words, no more excuses, no more excuses. I went to Kent State, I dropped out. I, well, I didn't drop out, I flunked out. Now that threw my life into a spiral, but because I didn't have a college degree, I could not let that stop me. And like you're doing where you're saying, all my friends at this age are settling your careers, you don't even know if they're happy or not. Stop comparing yourself to others. 
So the first thing you do is stop focusing on other people. Instead, focus on being the best version of you that you can. Then you'll recognize that you deserve to sit at the big table with everybody else after you become the best that you can be. Now, once you've accepted that you have as much right to success and much right to succeed as anybody else, the next step is learning how to talk the talk. You have to get fluid in the language of success so you speak it with ease. Surround yourself with people who've accomplished their dreams and immerse yourself in the culture of achievement. You know, you've got to be tough because the road to success is always under construction. It's never a clear path to success. The people who become successful are the people who have a relentless attitude. And you've just got to hang in there through the bad breaks because the bad breaks is coming. But they usually come right before the big break is about to happen. You get a series of bad breaks and it stumbles up a lot of people. My life and my success is to say to anyone, you can stumble, you can fall, you can get back up again. And like I've said before, we each have a gift. But too many people miss out because they refuse to sign the lease on their gift. You keep looking for it outside of you. Stop. Sit with yourself. What is it that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort? That's your gift. But if you are constantly looking outside of yourself and you don't latch on to your gift, you will never find your purpose. If you want to succeed, you must commit to your own gift and embrace it. Well, same advice I give to my kids, man. If I could get them to understand the importance of their 20s. Because, man, you know what I did? I just blew my 20s. I ended up spending all of my 30s fixing what I messed up in my 30s. And I spent all of my 40s doing what I could have been doing in my 30s. I looked up, man, and I had let too much time slip away. If you could get young people to get their foot on the gas pedal in their 20s, because right now they think going out is everything. And I keep telling them, man, you're going to you outgrow that in a minute. Because, you know, like at this age, it's when somebody says, hey, we're going to go out to a club tonight. <laughs> what? Go out to a club? Are you kidding me? It don't make no sense to you now. Because you're over that. But it takes a minute for them to understand. It's sad. I wish they'd get it. Man. It wasn't, I wasn't clubbing in my 20s. I just, I didn't, I didn't know how to make a vision board. I didn't, I didn't know how to. What really changed my life, man, was I started, I got in Amway when I was about 24. I got in Amway. And that changed my life, man, because the first time ever, they introduced me to self-help books. And I read two books that changed my life. It was uh, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale and The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. I read them books and it changed my life. But it also made me remember what my mother had taught me because she was a Sunday school teacher. Because all self-help books are Bible-based. There's nothing, everything comes from the Bible. All of, all of the self-help books, that's Proverbs. That's all it is. It's a book of wisdom and understanding. If you, if you can read that, it, it'll change your life too. But sometimes you need you have regular books where you can relate to it differently. But it's all comes from the Bible. It's like a great book is the secret. But if you read the secret, it's all Bible verse. And it's just by, based on the Bible. You can't think of nothing new how to tell a person to succeed without the Bible. You can't. It's, it doesn't work that way, you know? So, a couple of books changed my life, man. The magic of thinking big was huge. It just taught me one simple principle. It don't cost no more energy to think big than it does small. You can say Volkswagen and you can say Rolls Royce with the same amount of effort. You ain't got the grunt to say Rolls Royce. So if the Bible is true, what you say is a man is as he thinking. If you think poor thoughts, you got to be poor. The moment you change that thought into wealth of riches, you start the process to becoming wealthy or rich. That, it's, 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 it's not a matter trick. It's, it's, I mean, it's really how it works. I, you know, people complicate it. You got to do this and you got to do that. But the Bible's pretty plain. It ain't got no loopholes in it. it. really don't. It's just real simple. It say what it say. All you got to do is believe it's talking to you. <laughs> That's what it is. Most people don't think that God is talking to them. 
that I come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. You don't think he talking to you? He'll give you life more abundantly. He do. He really will. You ain't got to be rich to have an abundant life. Sometimes you just need to be healthy, happy. You know, you could be really happy, man, making $70,000 a year. You really, really can. You don't need a few million. I did, but you, you didn't need a few. It helped me a little bit. But be honest, it didn't make me happy. And to you, me, God, I ain't just ministers of the world. Just tell you nothing for good, just tell you what I did. You can go to church and hear you. Come on, Bob. I pass my office and say, I don't want to get you. Don't leave me, you ain't got to. What? I can take a sentence or a thought and make it come. Now, one dude told me once said, yeah, well, I hear you said it was hard, but you ain't funny to me. I ain't got to be funny to you. You've never bought a ticket to see me. No, I haven't. I still made it. It doesn't matter what nobody else thinks. Well, what they got to do? I don't think you're funny. Listen, you know, you know, you know if you can think of something to get $10 for. I bet all of you have something that God has gifted you with that you could convince somebody to give you $10. I'm going to show you how to become a million. All you need is to have one thing that you can get $10. I don't care if it's cutting hair, cutting grass, painting, babysitting, typing papers, walking dogs. I don't care what it is. Just get somebody to give you $10. All I want you to do is do it and get ten dollars. After you get ten dollars, I want you to do it ten more times. That's all. You have a hundred dollars. What? You, when you get that hundred dollars, whatever you did to get the hundred dollars, I want you to do it ten more times. You gonna have a thousand dollars. Now, get a little tricky. Whatever you did to make the thousand dollars, listen to me close. What I want you to do is do it ten more times. That's what I want you to do. Don't change shit. Just do it ten more times. You'll now have $10,000. Now, this where you got to start using your faith. After you make $10,000 with this $10 idea, all I want you to do is do it 10 more times. Just 10, whatever you did to make the $10,000, do it 10 more times. You're going to have $100,000. Here's the trick of tricks. Once you make $100,000, you're going to have to buy, hire a few people. All I want you to do after you make the $100,000, same thing you did to make the $100,000, I just want you to do it 10 years. Congratulations. You are a millionaire. That's how it's done. These jokes I'm telling right now, these $25 jokes. My first gig paid me $25. These 20, these the same jokes. This just English. I ain't learned how to do this in Spanish or none of this. I just kept telling these jokes in English 10 more times, 10 more times, 10 more times, till they started paying me $25,000 a night. Then they started paying me $100,000 a night, $150,000, $25,000 a night. I made a half million dollars telling jokes in one night. They're the same jokes. I just kept telling them over and over and over and over and over. $25 jokes repeated on a 10 time multiple. You could be a millionaire babysitting. You could be a millionaire doing eyebrows. You could be a millionaire cutting grass. You could be a millionaire as a barber, painting houses. You already have the gift. God has already given you the gift. He gave it to you at birth. You was born with it. God ain't never created a soul he didn't give a birth to. You, he, that, that he didn't give a gift to at birth. You sitting up in here, if you're poor today, it's because you tripping. You just tripping. You done talked yourself out your God-given gift. You done got some funk job somewhere and tried to act like you was happy with it. Now they done furloughed you. Now you disappointed. You ought to be jumping for joy. Walk your up the hall. Go take your gift God gave you and turn yourself into a millionaire.